95% of Americans say they believe in God. But we create this God to be what we want him to. So this is what kind of God culture creates. And if we're not careful, this is the boat we all fall into. We all want this kind of God. Not a Bible God. We want this kind of God. I stole this from my daughters this morning. We want a Plato God. Why do we want a Plato God? Because what do we do with Plato? We can take it out of the little box when we want to. So God, I'm going to keep you in a box. I'll take you out when I want you to. And this is God. This is what kind of God I want, a Plato God. So I get to mold and shape God the way I want to. And we create an own, our own God in our mind, and we still throw Jesus' name on him. So this is the Jesus I worship. You hear culture say this. I, I worship a Jesus who just loves all the time. I worship, you know, this, this God who is tolerant of the things I'm tolerant about. I, I, you know, I mold God to be angry over what I'm angry about. You know, my God and I have an understanding. Has anybody ever said that? Me and God have an understanding? I have a God that doesn't really care if I go to church. I have a God that doesn't really care if I give. I have a God that doesn't mind if I sleep with my girlfriend or boyfriend. I have a, I have a God that lets me do whatever I want. I have a God that lets me get drunk at the Super Bowl parties if I want to. This is my God, and this is how awesome he is. And, here, and then what we do is we shape that God in our mind, and we have this understanding of God. And then we even walk inside of a building, and we'll come in here, and we'll sing songs, and we'll raise our hands and we may even give and we'll take communion but the whole time we have this image of God that we've created and we worship that God here's the problem when you create an image of God and you worship that image of God you've created what does the Bible call that idolatry see we don't shape God we don't say who God is God says who God is God changes us and you're like well I'm not guilty of it I say we're all guilty of it because we'll say things like this. Oh, I heard a message today, or I heard a sermon, or I read my Bible today. You know what? I'm going to figure out how to apply that to my life as though your life is the standard. What do we do, right? Oh, I heard that message. I heard that Bible verse. So I'm going to figure out how to apply to my life. What we're saying is I'm going to figure out how to take the Bible and mold it around my life. Because at the end of the day, I'm really happy in my life because I'm a good person. And I'm going to wrap it around my life. But here's the problem with that is that doesn't change anything. We don't apply or mold the Word of God around our life. It's opposite. The Word of God never changes. God never changes. God says, I am the same yesterday, today, and what church? Forever. Jesus is the rock. What does that mean? He's not moldable. Jesus is the rock. So we're moldable. Isn't that what the Bible says? And I think in Ezekiel, it calls God the potter, and we are the what? Clay, you're Play-Doh. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're Play-Doh, baby. Tell him. We don't mold God. God molds us. He changes us. So you know what that means? When my life interacts with the Word of God, guess who changes? Does the Word of God change? Who changes? Me. My life needs to be molded by the word of God and molded around the word of God. The word of God changes me. We don't get to change the word of God. 